Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing. And today let's talk about putting our own lines together out of scrap lines that we may have laying around our place. I mean, if you've been in this business any length the time, you're going to have some lines that are just laying around not doing anything. And you might have this, you know, creative urge to chop them up and weld them together and turn them into something else. So let's take a look at what I've done with one of my lines, and then we'll talk about how I went about doing it. Now, I'm not talking about the welding part. I've got welding videos up on YouTube already. I'll put them up in the cards so you'll be able to uh, take a look at those if you've never done any welding before. No, I'm talking about how to make the cuts correctly to get what you want. First off, I'll have a look at what I've actually done already. I have these uh, scientific anglers um, sonar leaders, and they're all 50 grains each, uh, ideal for use as sink tips on single handle lines. So what I wanted to do was going to make a single hand line that I could use my six weight, that I could use overhead as well as spay cast, and I could use it in relatively tight conditions. So I wanted a head that, including the tip, would be 25 foot long, and I wanted a total weight of 220 grains, which meant the head had to be 170, and I wanted it to be an integrated line. Now, I realized I could go out and buy this stuff, but I already had scrap lines laying around the house, so like, why not make my own? So here it is. So the peach color part of this line is, uh, as I say, 170 grains, and it's 15 foot long. And what I'm going to be using this for is mostly is a uh, tight quarter spay casting, but I didn't want it too heavy because I wanted to be able to overhead cast it as well on a six weight. And 220 grains is not too heavy for a six weight to overhead cast. So when we get to the end of it here, you can see where I have welded together the running line with the back of the head. So I've got my green running line here, and this is all, all set to go. Um, all I have to do is uh, put the tip on it and go fishing. So that's fine. So how did I go about doing that? You know, I mustn't forget, I've got a loop at the end as well. So let's take an example here. This is a really old 12 weight line that I got years and years and years ago. So let's say I wanted to do something with this 12 weight line. Well, the first thing is you've got to come up with a target weight and a target length. So in other words, how long do I want the head to be? How long do I want, how, sorry, how heavy do I want it to be? Because when you're putting these things together, you can't really just start putting things together and say, oh, I hope I get it right and just eyeball it because you probably end up with a line that is less than useful to you because it's not the right weight, not the right length. So identify the length you want and the weight you want. Now, to get that, you're, you're going to say, well, I've got all these lines laying around. How can I know whether I can get what I want out of a line, piece of line? Well, I've got the scale here, and this is an El Cheapo scale. You can buy them anywhere. Uh, and I put to grams because uh, these scales don't weigh in grains, all right? So uh, grams is the easiest one to use. So we put that line on there, and it comes up to 23 grams. Oh, not 24, got it up to 24. So have some paper handy, write stuff down. So 24 grams. Now, the conversion to grains, if you want to use grains, the conversion to grains is to multiply by 15.43. So you take grams, multiply it by 15.43, you get grains. So you can convert this to grains if you want, and now you know how heavy this line is. The next thing to do is determine how long it is. So I've already measured it, it's 30 feet. So I have 30 foot at 24 grains. And also next thing is, is there a taper to it and how long is that taper? Well, I've measured that, it's six foot. So I have a 30 foot head with a six foot taper. Easy enough, right? So I want to turn it into something shorter. What can I do with it? First thing is we have to determine grains per foot. Now what complicates that is there's a taper. So what I've found is, and I've done this many times, and it always turns out to be, you know, pretty close to being bang on, is if you take the length of the taper and take a third of that, which in this case is two feet, and subtract that from the total length. So you've got a six foot taper, one third is two foot, subtract that from 30 feet, you get 28. 
Now you draw, divide 28 into 24 grams, or you know the grain equivalent, and you get the grain weight of this thing, of the belly. Grain weight per foot of the belly. So if you cut a foot of this off and weighed it, you would get what that calculation gives you. Quite close. You'd be surprised how close it'll get. So now we know the grains per foot of this line. We can say, okay, it's so many grains per foot. We multiply it by the length we want. And does that give us the, the weight we want? How close can we get? So there's a bit of juggling backwards and forwards here. You may decide this is too heavy. You might have to go shorter, might have to go longer. You might have to adjust your target, but now you know. As soon as you've got the grains per foot, the average grains per foot of the line, you're in a position to make a judgment over the, uh, the total grains per foot of the line and how long it should be and how much it's going to weigh. You're at that point, you're ready to start cutting. So what I would suggest when you cut is leave it longer and then weigh it. And then just nibble bits off until you get to the target weight or the target length, whichever is the most important to you. So let's just recap that quickly. The thing is you've got to find out the grains per foot of the line. And you do that by weighing it, removing one third of the taper from the length, dividing that into the weight. That gives you the grains per foot. And then you can start nibbling this back until you get it to where you want. And then you can weld it all together and you're ready to go. So what happens if you have a line like this, though, that has a bit of a taper in it? Uh, it's not a lot of a taper. Um, the simplest way, I would say, is to leave it longer than you think it's going to be and just start nibbling it back until you get it right. There is a way to do it with math. Those of you who are mathematically inclined will figure it out. You don't have, I don't need to tell you. But it's basically taking an average and uh, then working it out from there. But, as I say, you can, um, you know, just nibble it back, keep weighing it until you've got it to about where you want. And you can decide how much taper you want to leave in or how much you want to take off. Now, sometimes you'll be lucky if you've planned it right, you'll get bang on the, the taper and the, the length and the weight you want, you know, and which is where I got with this one. You get kind of practiced at it after a while. But, you know, you don't have to be, it's not a precision science, so if you end up being, you know, a foot or two off or 10 grains off, it doesn't matter. You barely notice it in your cast. But that's the essence of it. Once you know the grains per foot, you're in a, able to start nibbling it back to get the length and the weight you want. It also tells you whether that's the right line to use or should you be using another one. And so you go to something else in your stock and try that one as well. So that's the approach we take, and uh, I've done that multiple times. I've built stuff like this for years, and uh, they all work. They all turn out great, and they're great fun when you catch fish on the line that you put together yourself. So give it a try. Cheers.